Hello everyone and welcome to the chapter number 45 of Blender Master Course Geometry Nodes Part 2 of Creating a Magical Shield Scene In the previous chapter, we began with the creation of this scene where we created this shield with the help of geometry nodes and even added some simple flowers around it and in this chapter, we'll be understanding about all these topics in complete detail and we'll use them to finish our scene and yes, if you are new to this course then do check out the previous 45 chapters from the link of the playlist in the pinned comment Now we are back in our scene and the first topic for today's chapter is Understanding the Merge by Distance node. So for this, let's first go to the solid mode and now I'll be adding a UV sphere in the scene. So press shift plus A, go to mesh and select the UV sphere, press G and Z and move it upwards, go to the geometry nodes editor and click on the new button. Now let's add the merge by distance node and understand how it works. So press shift plus A, go to geometry and in operations, select the merge by distance node. Let's place it over here. Now this node will basically merge the vertices of your geometry according to the distance value here. If the distance between any two vertices is less than or equal to the distance value which we add here, it will simply merge those vertices together and the structure of the geometry will change accordingly. For example, if I change the distance to a value of 0.5 meters, then it simply merged all the vertices who were having a distance of less than or equal to 0.5 meters in between them. So when I reduce the distance, we'll have all the vertices and when I increase it, the vertices will begin to merge with each other according to the distance value. And this is the use of the merge by distance node. Now if I tap into the edit mode, press A to select everything, then press shift plus D to create a duplicate, move it in the X axis like this, then you can notice that as I increase the value of distance, the vertices of both the UV spheres are merging with each other. However, if you want that the vertices of each UV sphere should be merged individually, then for this, you can change the mode from all to connected. And now if I try to change the distance, then the vertices of the UV sphere will now be merging individually. Now this node can also be used to merge different points together. And to understand it practically, we will be creating some snow particles in the scene. So first of all, I will delete this, then press shift plus A, go to mesh, select the cube now we'll be scaling it up according to that area where we want the snow to be added in the scene so tap into the edit mode press s to scale it up like this let's also scale it down in the z axis move it upwards in the z axis and place it over here now let's come out of the edit mode now in order to add the snow in this volume of the cube we'll first convert it from mesh to volume then we'll be distributing the points in the volume by using the distribute points in volume node and in the end we'll replace the points with the snowballs so let's go to the geometry nodes editor click on the new button to convert it into volume we'll use the mesh to volume node so press shift plus a go to mesh and in operations select the mesh to volume node let's place it over here and now to distribute the points in the volume we'll use the distribute points in volume node so press shift plus a go to point and select the distribute points in volume we'll place it over here and now we have these points here and suppose you want to merge them then for this you can use the merge by distance node to add it over here press shift plus a go to geometry and in operations select the merge by distance node let's place it over here and now i can merge these points together by controlling the distance from here so we'll keep it to something like 1.4 or 1.5 meters and in this way the number of the points have reduced because all the points that were having a distance of 1.5 meters or less were merged together now to replace the points with the snowball we'll be adding the instance on points node so press shift plus a go to instances and select the instance on points let's place it over here then for the snowballs we'll be using the icosphere so press shift plus a go to mesh and in primitives select the icosphere let's place it over here and connect it to the instance let's reduce their scale to something like 0.2 or maybe 0.3 let's also increase the distance to something like 2 meters and now this is how these snowballs are looking in the scene now let's also create some material so go to the render view let's also slightly reduce the scaling of the snowballs so we'll keep it to something like 0.25 and the distance to something like 2.2 meters and now it looks perfect so for the material i'll go to the material properties click on the new button then let's go to the emission and increase the emission strength to a value of something like 5 and to apply this material on 005 to the snow particles go to the geometry nodes and Editor, press shift plus a go to material and select the set material node let's place it over here and select the material which is the material node 005 now if you want you can even change the color of this icosphere to something like yellow or maybe red if you don't want them to look like real snowballs so you can try to change the colors right now i'll be assigning the red color now moving ahead let's understand the next topic of this chapter which is the separate xyz node so for this first of all let's add some random object in the scene so press shift plus a go to mesh and let's add a cube press g x and place it over here let's also change the render engine from cycles to ev and now we'll be understanding the separate xyz node first in the shader editor and then in the geometry nodes editor so click here and select shader editor click on new material now to add the separate xyz node press shift plus a go to converter and select separate xyz let's place it over here now the separate xyz node is exactly opposite to the combined xyz node that we understood earlier so if i add it by pressing shift plus a going to converter and selecting the combined xyz then you can see that 
this combined XYZ node takes the input in the form of x, y and z axis and combines it into a single vector. On the other hand, the separate XYZ node takes the input in the form of a vector and separates it into x, y and z axis. Let's also understand it practically. So with this node selected, if I press Ctrl plus T, then now I'll have the texture coordinate and the mapping node added in the shade editor. Let's delete the image texture from here and connect the vector of the mapping node to the separate XYZ node. Let's also take the object socket and connect it to the vector. And now to view the result, hold down Ctrl Shift and left click on the separate XYZ node. Now the separate XYZ node is taking the vector and separating it in the X, Y and Z axis. Right now, they are using the X axis socket and as a result, you can see this black and white color on the cube which is changing in the X axis. So basically, in the X axis, the vector is changing from minus 1 to positive 1. In the beginning, the value is minus 1 and as I told you in one of the previous chapters, whenever the value is anything less than or equal to 0, in that case the color will always be black. Then the value increases to 0 in the middle and then as it reaches the end, the value will be equal to 1. Now in a similar way, if I take the Y axis and connect it to the output, then in this case, the change in color is being observed on the Y axis. Like initially, the value is minus 1, then in the middle it's 0 and in the end the value is equal to 1. Similarly, if I take the Z axis and connect it over here, then the same thing happens in the Z axis also. At the bottom most point, the value is equal to minus 1, then it increases to 0 in the middle and at the top the value is equal to 1. So in simple words, we can say that the separate XYZ node simply separates the vector into the X, Y and Z axis. Now let's try the same with the geometry nodes also. So I'll select the plane, go to the geometry nodes editor from here and now to add the separate XYZ node, press shift plus A, go to utilities and in vector, select the separate XYZ node. Let's place it over here. Now I'll be adding the position node to be used as a vector to be separated. So press shift plus A, go to geometry and in read, select the position node. Let's place it over here and connect it to the vector. And now if I take the X axis socket and connect it to the selection in the merge by distance node, then in this case, the vector will get separated in the X axis and we'll be getting a result where in the beginning, the value will be minus 1, then in the middle, the value will be 0 and in the end, the value will increase to positive 1. As a result, the merge by distance node will only get applied on that part where the value is greater than 0. This concept is exactly similar to that in the shader editor which we understood with the help of this cube. For example, if I take the X axis and connect it to the output, then initially the value was minus 1, then it became 0 and then it increased to positive 1. Similarly, in the geometry nodes also, here the value is minus 1, here it is 0 and in the end the value is equal to 1. Now let's go to the geometry nodes editor again and so this was the concept of the separate XYZ node. For now, I'll delete it from here. Let's also delete this position node. Now let's move to the next topic of this chapter which is the value node and to understand it, let's first select the plane then in the geometry nodes editor, press shift plus A, go to input and in constant, select the value node. Let's place it over here. Now the value node is the simplest node which helps to give an input of a value and the benefit of using the value node is that you can connect the same value to the multiple sockets. For example, you can see here that in the grid node, the size in the X and Y axis is equal to 30 meters. So if I take the value socket and connect it to the size in the X and Y axis like this and increase the value to 30 and press enter, then in this case, this value of 30 is being assigned to the size sockets here. So this node is simply used to assign a single value to multiple nodes or sockets. In fact, in the density option here, you can see that the density is equal to 38.6. So if I take the value socket, which is carrying the value equal to 30 and connect it to the density, then in this case, the density is reduced to a value of 30. Now moving ahead, we'll be adding some mushrooms in the scene. And for this, let's first add a UV sphere. So press shift plus A, go to mesh and select the UV sphere. Press G, X and place it over here. Go to the front view by pressing one on the numpad. And now here we have this UV sphere added in the scene. Tab into the edit mode and to model the mushroom, we'll be deleting the bottom half of the vertices. So first let's turn on the X-ray mode by pressing Alt plus Z, then select these vertices, press X and select delete vertices. Now press A to select everything and let's scale them down in the Z axis like this. Now I'll select this edge loop at the bottom by holding Alt and left clicking here. Then let's zoom out and change the view. Let's also turn off the X-ray mode and now to make the bottom part of the mushroom, press E to extrude, right click to cancel the movement, S to scale it down like this. Also press Ctrl plus R to add some edge loops over here. Use the scroll wheel to increase the number of loop cuts and then left click and right click to cancel the movement. Now let's move them slightly upwards by pressing GZ and place them over here. Now for the bottom part, I'll select this inner edge loop by holding Alt and left clicking here. Now let's extrude it by pressing E and Z and extrude it like this. Let's also scale it up at the bottom by pressing S and now it looks perfect. 
we have the simple mushroom ready in the scene. Now for the material on the top of the mushroom, go to the material properties, create a new material and to assign this material to the top, we'll select this vertex in the middle, this one and to increase the selection, hold down control and numpad plus and let's do it a few more times till the entire area on the top is covered. And yes, one more thing, this material.007 is the first material and so it's the default material that automatically gets applied to the entire object. However, to create a material that will only get applied to the top, I'll create a new material from here and click on the assign button. Now let's come out of the edit mode. Let's also change this window to the shader editor. Now for the spot like texture, we'll be using the Warner texture. So press shift plus A, go to texture and select Warner. Let's place it over here. Press control plus P to connect it to the texture coordinate and the mapping node. And to view the output, hold on control shift and left click on the Warner texture. Now here we have these spots on the top and to control their appearance, let's add a color ramp node. So press shift plus A, go to converter and select the color ramp, place it over here. Let's change the interpolation to constant and now if I take the second pointer and move it like this you can clearly see that now I can easily control the looks of the spots from here also let's reduce the scale value to something like 2.5 or maybe 2.4 and this is how the texture is looking now now to give some color to the mushroom let's first select the principal BSTF node and place it over here and now I'll be adding another color ramp node which we'll be using to give some colors to the mushroom so press shift plus a go to converter and select the color ramp place it over here let's select the white pointer and we'll change the color to something like red. Let's also change the black color by increasing the brightness and now we have this white color on the spots. Let's also apply shade smooth by right clicking and selecting shade smooth and with this the top of our mushroom is now completely ready. For the bottom part I'll select this material or 007 and we won't be doing much changes here. We'll only apply a simple noise texture. So press shift plus A go to texture and select noise texture place it over here. Connect the color socket to the base color. Let's also increase the scale value to something like 20 or 15 and now we have this simple material for the base. With this, the mushroom looks perfect to be added in the scene. So to distribute it on the plane, let's select the plane, switch to the geometry nodes editor from here and just like we place the flowers, let's also place the mushrooms on the plane. But yes, we added these flowers only on this path that we created using the edge path to selection node which we won't be doing in case of the mushrooms. So first of all, I'll select both of these nodes which is the distribute points on faces and the instance on points. Press shift plus D to create a duplicate and place it over here. Now, let's reduce the density to something like 5, take the mesh socket of the grid node and connect it over here and for the instance let's add the mushroom that we created so i'll select this sphere left click and drag it into the geometry nodes editor take the geometry socket and connect it to the instance socket now i'll connect it to the joint geometry node and now you can see here that we have so many tiny mushrooms distributed in the plane so first of all i'll reduce the density to something like 0.5 let's also increase the scaling to something like 0.3 or 0.4 and to move them upwards we'll be using the transform geometry node so for this press shift plus a go to geometry and in operations select the transform geometry node. Let's place it over here. Now with the translation value in the z-axis, we'll move the mushrooms upwards. Also, I think that we should reduce the density further to a value of 0.25 and now to give some random rotation to each of the mushrooms, we'll be connecting the random value node to the rotation socket. So press shift plus A, go to utilities and select random value. Let's place it over here. Change the data type to vector, connect the value socket to the rotation. Now to ensure that the randomness of the rotation is only applied in the z-axis, I'll change the maximum values in the x and y axis to 0 and now we have the randomness in the rotation only in the z-axis. Now the scene looks perfect so let's go to the camera view by pressing 0 on the numpad to adjust the camera. Click on this lock icon which is the lock camera to view and now let's adjust the view like this. Let's also zoom out. Also I think that we should reduce the size of these snowballs so I'll select them and in the geometry nodes editor let's reduce the scale value to something like 0.15 to place the camera properly. You can do one more thing which is to select the camera from the scene collection. Press end then by using these values of the location and the rotation you can adjust the camera view perfectly. So first of all, I'll change the rotation in the Y and Z axis to exact 0 or maybe let's slightly change the rotation in the Z axis. Let's also move it in the X axis like this. Then to move it upwards, increase the location in the Z axis like this. And so by simply adjusting these values, you can easily control the camera view. For now, I think that this position looks perfect. So let's finalize it. Also, I'll change the render engine back to cycles. And this is how our scene looks now. If you want, you can even download some texture for the base from websites like polyheaven.com and apply them on this plane. But for now, I will only be adding a simple green color to the base. So let's select the base, go to the material properties and create a new material. Let's change the base color to green and to apply this material to this base, we will be adding a set material node in between this grid node and the join geometry node. So press shift plus A, go to material and select the set material node. Let's place it over here and then select this material.009 from the list. And now we have the simple green material applied to the base. Also with this, we arrive to the end of the chapter number 45. In today's chapter, 
together, we learnt about some new geometry nodes, some new blender concepts, and we even finalized this magical shield scene. And so our next chapter will be the chapter number 46, Geometry Nodes, Part 1 of Creating Dragons. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel, press that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming chapters. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.